All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything Calls Well podcast. Today we're going to be looking at the CFP semifinal. Number one, Alabama takes on number four, Cincinnati, at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, 3.30 p.m. on ESPN on December 31st. At the Cotton Bowl, Alabama, 13.5-point favorite. That was the opening line. The over-under is set at 59.5. Looking at this Alabama offense, you know, they – have been carried by Bryce Young the last three weeks. He had 500-plus yards against Arkansas. Got him on that 97-yard drive against Auburn. And then here recently against Georgia, he, he had a field day, 400-plus yards, set an SEC record. He locked up the Heisman, too, presumably. He's not going to lose the award, I don't believe, after that performance against Georgia. You know, for the most part of the year, you know, they've kind of struggled on the interior offensive line. Evan Neal, left tackle, has been a big addition for them. Evan Neal's been big for them. You know, they shorted up against Georgia, though, with ease. You know, I kind of expected they would fix it. But to do what they did in a week's matter of time, that was just very impressive. Bill O'Brien, great play calling. They were able to stretch the defense out. And, you know, I picked Bama the wings. I felt like once that defensive line got neutralized by Georgia, their defense would struggle because they hadn't seen this type of matchup all year, and that's exactly what happened. But um, they did more than struggle. They got burned consistently by Jamison Williams, who, uh, you know, he can do anything. He can make plays from the outside in the slot. John Mechie. He's out for the year now for torn ACL. He had a big first half. That's a big loss. You're going to have to account for that in some way. Ja'Cory Brooks is likely to step up in that role. You know, he had the big touchdown against Auburn. Ajayi Hall. You know, they got talent, but inexperience here with a tough matchup. That could be something to monitor. I think Javel Billingsley, he's starting to come on here the last few weeks after kind of being a Nick Saban's doghouse to start the year. He's got good size, good skills. They need to find a way to use him here in the playoffs. I really like what he brings to the table. Um, you know, they ran they run for about 150 yards per game. They did a pretty solid job, I think, of running the ball against Georgia. Uh, about, I think it was 110 yards. Um, avoiding tackles for loss, though, that was the bigger story. They did not have a lot of negative plays at all against that defense. The force is plenty of them. They were able to stay ahead of the sticks for most of the game. Uh, they didn't have a lot of penalties. Brian Robinson, he ended up getting a healthy dosage of touches. Um, you know, he was questionable coming into the game. He had 55 yards versus Georgia. Bryce Young had 40, so they ran for a little over 100 yards. Uh, you know, so it was a solid effort. I think the running game did exactly what it was supposed to do in that ball game, and uh, that's kind of kind of be the story the rest of the year. Looks like they're going to be pass heavy the rest of the season. Uh, this offense, you know, they're red hot right now, coming off 40 plus points against the Georgia defense. But you know, Mechie's going to be out. They're facing another tough defense here. Overall, it's a very good unit. And Bryce Young, he's uh he's on fire for the last three weeks. He's been, as I mentioned at the top of the show, he's been so good this year. Uh, the, him, the combination of him and Bill O'Brien, it seems to really, uh, they're cl- clicking on all cylinders right now. So it's going to be hard to slow these guys down. But, um, you know, with the new elevations of the injury, and keeping in mind the offensive line still has had its issues. Uh, the offense isn't perfect by any means, but they are at the best they're, this is the best they're playing right now, fresh off that beat down of Georgia. So this Alabama offense is going to be very tough to contain for Cincinnati. Looking at the Cincinnati offense, you know, Desmond Ritter has progressed, progressed so well this year. He's making a lot of big league throws. He's really raised his draft stock. I think Mel Kuyper has him top five in his recent quarterback rankings. He's a legit prospect. He's a very good player. You're going to see Ritter keep the ball a lot, too, on that zone read. He's very good, especially on the outside of the tackles. Ritter, they've not used his legs as much as they used to as a freshman. But, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks, they've started to kind of get back to that. I think you're going to see him get at least 15 to 20 touches in this game run of the ball because they can benefit from that extra defender. And I think they'll be successful in doing so. There, There's not a time where Cincinnati really hasn't been successful using the quarterback run. Ritter's very fast. He's a tough runner. So that's going to be a big part of this offense in this game, especially in short yardage situations. He has a good group of pass catchers as well. Tyler Scott and Trey Tucker, those are the big hitters. I like to see Tucker get some more touches. Uh, they get him involved on special teams a good bit. Those are the speedsters to watch out for. Alec Pierce. He, um, you know, Cincinnati does not have great size of receiver, but Pierce is one of those guys. He's 6'3". He's a great one-on-one player. Uh, Josh Wiley at big tight end. You've seen Bama just struggled with Brock Bowers. Uh, those guys aren't even similar in terms of talent, but Wiley, he's a, he's a big body. He's their tight end. They like to get him involved in the red zone across the middle of the field. This passing tackle, they've been really tough to rattle. Um, Redder, he's been playing so good this year. It's been tough to contain this balance, which has led to success downfield for them. Speaking of the balance, Jerome Ford, 220 pounds. He's a bigger runner, but he's got some great speed, too. He's a former Alabama running back as well. Many people don't know that. He transferred from the Tide over to the Bearcats. Now he's rematching against his former team. He's going to get short yardage work, goal line work, 
Um, again, in the speed, he has a burning 70-yard run against Houston. He had 180-plus yards, a couple of touchdowns. He's almost got, I think he's got over 20 touchdowns total on the year. Almost 1,200 yards rushing. This zone split running game they bring to the table. I really like what they have in general in terms of balance. I think the offensive line they have is the big reason for that, though. James Tunsdale, I really like him at left tackle. He's really good. Lorenzo Metz, he's huge. 6'9", 326. This offensive line has some pretty good size. They had no issues with a really good in uh, you know depth. He was with a really good and deep Houston front. They didn't really struggle that much with them. You know I'm cust I'm accustomed to seeing Cincinnati play good teams and blow them out um, over the last couple of years. That's been the story of Luke Fickle. Of course, even if they win this game, I don't think anyone would expect it to be by a blowout. But this is a good team. They show up uh, in every single contest. I expect them to show up here. And it starts with offense and it starts with that Desmond Ritter who is a legit prospect in my eyes. Looking at the Alabama defense, uh, you know, Federian Mathis, he's got some good penetration all year long. He's been very consistent in that category. DJ Dale, they got him back on the defensive line. Against the run, I think they've been much better. Uh, they started the year pretty shaky, you know, against Florida. They were not very good with positioning. It's been really good since. Um, you know, they kind of struggled early. They are kind of on their heels against Georgia. There was a few, I don't know, at least two or three big runs the Bulldogs almost ripped off. And um, he got tripped up by the last offender, whatever, running back at Cook or White, whichever one got the specific carries. There was a few times where Georgia almost ripped them off. They had they had really good blocking at times where they sealed up the defensive front. And they are really controlling the line of scrimmage. That's a big, nasty offensive line. Cincinnati, they're big as well. I wouldn't say they're as nasty, but they have the good size. And Bama, they have struggled in space, especially on screens. Auburn, their only touchdown came on one. They had a big one to McCotney in the SEC title. So that's been a big issue for them is um, defending in space on these screen plays. When defenders get out in front, they're not doing a very phenomenal job of bringing the ball carrier down. Um, Will Anderson, though, he's their top playmaker. 31 and a half tackles for loss, 15 sacks. Um, that's the most tackles for loss that I can remember going back through the stat sheets from – from the last decade or so, that's the most I've seen in a long time. There's only one guy, um, Brown, Sammy Brown from Houston. He had 30 a number of years ago. That's the only guy that's ever hit that much, at least. Um, I think Terrell Suggs maybe had a high number as well, but that's insane to have that kind of production from your outside linebacker. He's phenomenal. He's the alpha dog on this defense. Linebacker Henry Tioto, Christian Harris, phenomenal playmakers. I love this linebacking unit they have. Uh, they had an injury at the beginning of the year. Uh, to one of their best players, and they've had no problem replacing him whatsoever, uh, Chris Allen, I believe. I like this front seven from Alabama. They did have some struggles there against the run, and um, Tank Bigsby had good, had some good plays as well in that Auburn game. So the yardage total was brought down by some sacks, but you know they're not elite against the run like I expected them to be, but they're not by any means bad at all. They're second, they're second or first nationally in 20 plus yards allowed, or 20 plus runs allowed. So this is a very good run defense. I wouldn't consider them elite, though. Um, looking at the secondary, they've had some issues with positioning at times themselves. I just talked about their run defense early in the year had that. They kind of shored that up. Secondary, though, they're still struggling a bit. you just seen what Traylon Burks did against Ar uh, when, for, when they played Arkansas a few weeks ago. Um, no, no one else. Cincinnati, Georgia, none of those guys have Traylon Burks. So that's not going to be a problem, I, I would say, for the rest of the playoffs. But um, they still have had issues. They could not contain Bowers across the middle of the field. They lost a jump ball to Pickens. These guys are plenty capable. They have a lot of good players. But playmaking is inconsistent at times. So is that zone across the middle of the field. Josh Job, I expect him to have, be one of the go-to corners in this game. I think they're going to put him on Alec Pierce. Uh, I wouldn't. He's not going to shadow him by any means, but that's going to be the guy they're going to look to jam him. He's smaller despite being 6'3". I think he only weighs about 175 pounds. Um, physical corners for Bama. Malachi Moore in the slot. DeMarco Helms, he's been great for them here down the stretch at safety. Brian Branch, he's been targeted a good bit in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. He's kind of a liability there. But um, this nickel package, it's capable. But um, Gary Danielson kind of alluded to it. If they can run against this nickel package, then your defense is going to have a bit of a headache. And Georgia was able to do that early on. Um, they weren't able to sustain it for the rest of the game. That's something I think Cincinnati's going to look to target. Overall, it's a very good Bama defense. Stenson Bennett had 340 yards. So they downfield, the secondary was kind of shaky. But they still had two interceptions, including a pick six. So um, they held up. 
but we'll see what happens here in this game. This defense, it's not as good as I expected it to be for 2021, but it's no. This Cincinnati defense, these guys are really good. They don't get enough credit, I don't think. Uh, you know, they gave up 10 points there in that first quarter. They settled in like they always seem to do. Teed off on a bad offensive line. As expected, I figured that was a big matchup they were going to win against Houston. And the only other score they gave up was, you know, essentially a garbage time touchdown to the Cougars. This defensive line is phenomenal. Malik Vaughn, Curtis Brooks, uh, Maja Sanders coming off the edge. This 3-3-5 scheme they run is very good. They do a very great job of getting to the passer, slowing down the run, despite having only six bodies in the box. Um, Darian Beavers on linebacker. He's exceptional, as is Deshaun Pace and Joel Dublanco. These guys are good. This is a phenomenal linebacking unit. Um, the linebackers are very good at stopping the run, I'd say, for, you know, only having three down linemen in front of them. They do a good job of rallying to the ball, playing with energy. I think this is going to be an interesting matchup against Alabama. Um, it's because this secondary is great. People are going to hopefully recognize this secondary leading up to this game, show them respect. They rarely allow big plays. 18 interceptions, third nationally. Three years in a row, they've had 16-plus interceptions in a year. That's all they do is play make. Ahmad Gardner. I expect him to be on Jamison Williams. I do think he will shadow Williams for a good portion of the game. Other than when he's in the slot, I don't know if they'll play him inside. But I think they're going to get him up in his face, press him, be nasty. They might even look to put another guy over top of him. You know, Kobe Bryant, Javon Hicks, they have a lot of veterans. These guys have been playing together a long time. I really love this defense. They are exceptional at forcing turnovers. I think they might lead the nation in forcing turnovers. If not, they're right up there in the top three. They've only allowed 400-plus yards twice over the last 22 games. Tulsa earlier in the year. And then Georgia last year in the Peach Bowl where they couldn't run the ball against Cincinnati. Um, I think that's something that, that's important to allude to that matchup. Yes, it was you know a year ago, but it's a very similar team. Bama and Georgia, the heavyweights of college football. Cincinnati really stuffed that running game. And, um, you know, they're playing an offensive line that's kind of had their issues at times. So I think this defense matches up very favorably against this Alabama offense, especially if no John Mechie. This is a phenomenal unit. I can't express it enough. Luke Fickle, that's his background as a defensive coach. He's been doing that his whole career. Um, I really like the matchup the Bearcats have on the defensive side of the ball. But, of course, if they get start to get torn up a little bit, um, it's probably going to be an issue. This is the backbone of their football team. Their offense is good, don't get me wrong, but this defense is ha going to have to be the ones to keep them in the game. They're going to have to stick to their tendencies of forcing turnovers and not allowing big plays. But um, 40 minutes, they're on the field for 40 minutes against Houston, a very respectable offense that has balance. They, get, they allowed about 335 yards of offense. They're on the field for 40 minutes and gave up less than 400. This is a very good defense. And, um, again, I like the matchup they have here. In a team comparison, Zach quarterback Bryce Young is going to win the Heisman. He'll get the edge there. But Desmond Ritter is not far behind as a Heisman, uh, a, a Heisman underdog. He'll probably, I don't know if he'll end up in New York or not, but he's had a very good year. He's a perennial draft prospect in many people's eyes. So he's not far behind. But Young, he's red hot right now. Just torched the number one defense in college football. They get the edge there. Running back, I'm going to give him the edge as well. Brian Robinson, he appears to be healthy. He'll have a couple weeks uh, to get there. Trey Sanders, former five-star recruit. He's not been getting a lot of touches. You know, even when Robinson, you know, being, you know, 75%, he still wasn't getting them. He's a very, very capable runner. I like him. Drum Ford, though, the former Alabama running back, he's really good in his own right. But depth is not very similar. I like what Bama has over the Bearcats. Um, receiver, the, de the depth that Houston, or a receiver, the depth the Bearcats have is actually pretty impressive. I like what they got. They got some burners. But um, Jamison Williams right now, he's probably going to win the Blitnikoff. John Mechie being down is obviously a big blow. I'm still going to give the edge to a tie to pass catcher, though. Offensive line, I'm going to give it to the Bearcats. I like the I like the size, and I like how they've been playing all year long. And again, against Georgia last year, they were not bad at all against a strong Bulldog front. I'm also going to give them the edge there on the defensive line. I think they have the, in the in the trenches Will Anderson. Technically a linebacker coming off the edge, yes, but I think the interior... Um, I like Cincinnati's defensive tackles more than Bama's. Van and Brooks, these guys are playing phenomenal football. A lot of people have a lot of high praise for them. They watch the Bearcats. Um, linebacker cores, it's kind of even, honestly, but Bama, they're going to get the edge here. Henry Tioto, Harris is a phenomenal playmaker, and then Anderson, 
of course, coming off the edge with uh, 31 and a half tackles for loss. It's pretty impressive. Secondary, I gave Bama the edge against Georgia. That kind of held serve. I'm going to give Cincinnati the edge here. They do not allow a lot of big plays. You know, I just touched on it. They force a lot of interceptions. Uh, and they got that front front six. It really kind of helps them out, too. This five-man rotation, they got a lot of veterans, a lot of playmakers, led by Ahmad Gardner. I'm going to give them the edge in the secondary. Keys to the game for Alabama. Uh, you know, they're kind of both, honestly, for both teams. But for Bama, I think you got to get Williams loose. He's a big-time playmaker. He's been doing it all year. He's tough to contain after the catch. And I think they also got to get some pressure on Desmond Ritter. Their secondary at times has been a little shaky. If you can get pressure on them, uh, your defense will be set up for success tremendously. Because um, I think Cincinnati, they're going to be able to run the ball you know, a little bit. I don't think they're going to do it to the tune of, you know, 250 yards or anything. But I do think they'll have respectable balance. But if you can get some pressure on Ritter, rattle this passing game. No one's really been able to do that this season. But that's going to be your best, uh, the best recipe for success for your defense. Bearcats, same for them. Got to get pressure on Bryce Young. You've seen what happened to Georgia. They didn't have their best pass rusher in Adam Anderson, despite having tremendous talent. They were unable to get to him. So that's going to be a big key for the Bearcats. Uh, and also limit the big plays. You've been doing it all year. For, you know, under Fickle's entire tenure, really. You do not give up a lot of big plays. If you can limit them here, hold Bama to field goals instead of touchdowns in the red zone, you're going to have a great opportunity to win this one. Uh, you know, the prediction, I really want to pick Cincinnati. I think this is a really good team. Uh, you know, people are going to laugh until this game's played in Cincinnati. They're going to fight hard. I'm going to take Bama to win 33-30. I think they're just going to squeak this one out. I think their offense is too red hot. They've overcome all kinds of challenges. They played the number one defense, had no problems with them. They had less than a minute and a half to go down the field, uh, the, the length of the field against Auburn to score and send it to the Astros. Alabama, they've just been fighting so much adversity over the past couple of weeks, and they've had no – and they've not blinked one, one bit, so – um, I think Bama, same thing's going to happen here. They're going to bend a bit, but they're not going to break. They will not flinch, and I think they're going to itch this one out in Dallas. But Cincinnati's a really good team. I would not be shocked if they won this one. Um, a lot of value on that 13.5, and, and I think it will continue to grow. Cincinnati's a very good football team. Do not get that confused. Luke Fickle, a great coach. The scheme they run on defense, they can really match up well. So don't be shocked if the Bearcats win this one. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty solid game all around. But Bama, I think I'll see them punching their ticket to the national championship.